Hello, Tom Lavecchia here with a special live on the male plastic surgery channel. Sorry, we're just a little bit of ambiance. We have an extra special guest. Our <laughs> extra special guest. We've got a full house today. It's the evening. But uh, Dr. Steinbrecht, uh, I'm really excited that you're taking your time out of your busy schedule to kind of do the most frequent uh, Q&A. But before we jump in, for those who get to know you, why did you, you know, plastic surgery is 90% women. You could do women and kind of call it a day, maybe dabble in men. But why did you have the appetite and the passion to kind of go all in on male plastic surgery? Yeah, I tell you what, it was it was sort of an organic evolution. So this all started, I'd say, probably about 12 years ago when I was first just starting my practice. And I had just fortunate enough to go to just an outstanding general surgery training at NYU and then uh, even uh, more spectacular I don't know why they picked me but a uh, training program for plastic and reconstructive surgery and had opportunity to really work with uh, legends in aesthetic surgery at Manhattan Ioneer and uh, and NYU in New York just amazing titans like Cheryl Aston who's incredible uh, Dan Baker Charlie Thorne Nick Tabal the rhinoplasty amazing, uh, really, really top-notch people. And while I was doing it, the whole time I was imagining, I was just, you know, we're going to operate on women. Women want surgery. We're going to do this. And then all my buddies were said, when are you going to finally get done with training? Because I want to get my abs done. I want to sculpt those babies out, or I want bigger biceps or chest or something like that. And that's when I started helping out my friends and more and more it just snowballed until finally in about 2014, um, Bernadette, who is my patient coordinator and Joseph, who's now my, our main patient coordinator said, you have got to make a instructional website to talk about men's stuff. And that happened 2014, 15. And then it just all snowballed after that. Uh, we had we had the the men's website in New York, yep. uh, and then in 2016 we had our very first case in Los Angeles. So do the math. Been there almost. I don't know what is that. Uh, seven, seven, six, years? seven years. Seven, seven years. Seven years. Yeah. And then we've been in Chicago, cutting paste mm -hmm. that baby to Chicago, and just been loving it there for the last three years. So. It's just gotten more and more. And I'll tell you why I did it, because so few people helped uh, help the guys. And I'll tell you why, because the men were it's always a boogeyman. Why? People were not trained uh, to operate on men. And uh, so we were always told sort of unofficially, uh, I can come out of the closet with this, that men are not good patients. They're bad patients They're picky patients. They have problems or problem patients. It wasn't the men's fault. It was the doctor's fault. Hmm. The doctors weren't trained to do this. Uh, and it was the programs. The programs never trained the doctors to do that. So we're going to have to do some lipos. We're going to do like some uh, some some fillers <laughs> on our guest sure. back there. Um, he doesn't need any. He's perfect in every way. So, but that's when we started doing it. And uh, these, these people, were, the surgeons were never trained. So I went out on my own and I started doing more and more men. Then we wrote a textbook with 48 authors, uh, here, actually, actually yeah. 68 authors and 48 chapters. That was two years ago. And uh, our textbook on a, a men's aesthetic plastic surgery. And that's just been so good for people, other surgeons to learn and other medical students to learn. So that, that was the evolution of it. And I've never looked back, uh, never turn back and it's and now it's really uh after going out for seven years and really focusing on educating other people with our institute of uh men's aesthetic plastic surgery now it's really starting uh to to boom for other surgeons in which we're really very happy and very pleased about nice tell us a little bit about you're on the forefront so tell us a little bit about what are the most common requests and yeah. are there any local kind of flavors you see a little bit more of requests in LA versus Chicago and vice versa. Yeah. So in New York, everybody wants to wants to look good and look refreshed. They want to look natural. I think everybody on both coasts want to look natural. Natural. The men, I would say the men in New York want to look more the best 
for the age that they are, or maybe a little bit younger. The guys in California, the guys on the West Coast definitely want just to plain out, look younger. They want it because they, 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 the people in New York might tend to be more, a little more formal, a little more businessy. Um, the guys in New York uh, or in LA and on the West Coast tend to want to maybe dress a little more athletically and also um, to, uh, to, you know, maybe dress five or 10 years younger than what their age are, younger than people in New York. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean one's good, one's bad. It's just a sort of a different attitude. Um, and we always have exceptions. I have some of my New York guys, I say, you're a California guy. And some of the guys in LA, I say, you might be more buttoned up like an East Coast boy. So it, it kind of goes back and forth. But I would say the most common things going out for men right now is definitely uh, is body banking and the new and and the trends are to not just throw away the fat. Here's an example of, of body banking where we take out the bad fat, isolate cells for structure and volume and put them in good areas. So that's been the game changer for me since I started doing that. Now we're on our 10th anniversary of doing it and started doing it for the abs. And then we started putting in the chest, shoulders, the, the glutes, uh, the traps, makes a beautiful cobra back. And then really uh, all over the place uh, into the thighs, into the lats, anywhere that you would want more volume. And the importance of it is really two things. I can do a better job. I can make a better final product, sort of like uh, a sculptor, he doesn't just take the, the clay and pop it on the ground. He takes the clay from one area and puts it back into the other. Area. And I can do that to give a more artistic, a more athletic result. And now, uh, uh, now it's becoming so popular um, that people are really asking for body bank for by name because they know it's they're going to get a more superior result. And we feel so strongly about it. When we do it, you know, sometimes people don't understand it, they're not familiar with it, or they don't get the science behind it. Why would I want to put more fat in other areas that they uh, that they really, uh, once they understand the science behind it, that they're going to need to do it? Because if you don't park it, if you don't bank it in another area, not only do you get a better result, you get broader shoulders, traps that pop, and more definition in your chest every time you have a guilt-free a uh, 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 piece of bread or mashed potatoes, which I could never eat before, but you also prevent, it's your insurance policy, because if we bank it on the outside, we're li less likely after liposuction to get visceral fat, I call them liposuction cripples, or guys that have had liposuction five different times, best clinics throughout, the, throughout Europe and South America and the United States. And they keep on wondering, how come I get skinnier on the side, but then I just get more and more visceral gut, belly, beer fat. And that's because the only fat cells left on your body uh, are in your belly. So that's why you keep on getting fatter there because none of the five doctors that you had for liposuction before ever thought of banking the, the fat cells or parking the fat cells on the other on the outside it really makes sense um, biologically surgically medically and just common sense that you would want to create a reservoir for having any kind of carbs postoperatively it really works and that's why we're doing so much of this okay i gave a little preview of the body bank you want to get back to that in a little yeah. bit but just really quick if you go over What's the motivation as to why these guys are getting surgery? Uh, yeah. Optic for male plastic surgery. Well, for and for all the different, because I do a lot of face as well, is it's confidence. And in, we've, we've sort of broken up our people into um, different groups. And it's funny, it, it, without being sexist, I don't want to be sexist, but typically women kind of don't want to be, you know, pigeonholed. They want to be... They're expressive, very independent. They want to make their own decisions who they are. Guys kind of want to have you like help them out. You know, they don't want to waste time. They just want to say, I am this type of person. So tell me what I need. And that's why we always, we started this a long time ago. We, we set up our, our, um, hey Jason, we set up our website 
to say, hey, what what type are you? And guys, I find don't have a problem with this. They want to say, I uh, I'm an aspiring model, or I am an actor, I'm the I'm your guy next door, uh, I'm a bodybuilder. These are the things I'm looking for. I lost a lot of weight. Those are what we call our biggest winners, sort of. Uh, you know, based on the, the biggest loser program. And then uh, we have our, our Forbes guys, our CEO, the boardroom guys. So we've already taken the, taken the work away. So you just go right to the part of the website that reflects what you're interested in. And then we have all the procedures, the most common procedures that people from that group uh, reflect. And I could just give you, for example, you know, today, I'm just thinking of the consults I saw today, saw a lot of great consults. And one of the guys was one of the, one of our biggest winners. All right. So he lost a lot of weight, lost 170 pounds. So he has all this dripping, dripping skin. He's looking for wow. what they call skin surgery. And so for these guys, we have to trim out all the skin, but they do have some fat left. So instead of just throwing that fat away, like everybody else, I don't just like trim off the, the, the skin and just make a board that that would be boring so what we do is we take off the little bit of fat and i can get make a better result than than the people that do typical uh, weight loss surgery trim off the skin and that's it we shape things so we we trim things off but then we borrow the let the fat that is the clay that i can use to create a better better a better result so we take out that clay and then we make the chest pop shoulders wider bring it up to the traps, or I can use abdominal highlights. So instead of just pulling down the skin like a shade on some of the other massive weight loss surgeries that you might do, we pull it down, but then we etch it in and we add in the details of their own natural abdominal um, uh, musculature. But it's got a line. It just can't be drawn and splotted on. It's got to line up with their own natural um, uh, abdominal muscular because when they lose that weight and they're even going to lose more because they're going to be even more inspired after we trim off the excess surgery. However, they lose it. It's got to, it's got to match with their own apps. So we don't like to, to draw and, and cut and, and we like to uh, make sure that it's done with their own natural musculature. So that, that's an example of someone that's a mass weight uh, loss patient. Now I saw another person who he was 60 years old and he uh, is the head of his board for his company, and he needs to be competitive in the boardroom. And a lot of younger guys go on, particularly with the dot coms and for and the tech companies. And so, an older guy that's in his sixties or seventies and needs a neck lift or maybe a, 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 a we call it blepharoplasty, an eye lift. Those guys need to have something that looks good. They need to have it say masculine. They need to have it look natural. So what we offer is a Forbes facelift, which is basically um, uh, making you look good, but not doing it in a feminized way, not doing it in a natural way or an alien way, because we still want you to look good. So our the lift that we do is, uh, and the goal that we have is to have a very natural, natural result for any of the face work that we do. And uh, that is like the key. And that's what, that's what the men want. They always want the did he, didn't he kind of thing rather than so, something that looks unnatural or looks feminized. And uh, that's, that's another example of one of the consults we saw today. So it's, it's all good stuff. One of the hottest topics now, especially in the aesthetic and kind of a uh, weight game, if you will, is aesthetic, um, well, using aesthetics now is Ozempic for weight loss. And positively as a result is with the weight loss comes loose surgery, loose skin for surgery. And you kind of touch a little bit on kind of the torso tuck. So walk us through kind of what is Ozempic? What does it mean? Uh, yeah. weight so loss. So this is this has been truly a game changer. Are the weight like Wagovi and uh, Ozempic? These are the weight reducing drugs or injectables. And that what when you take them, they fundamentally just to make it to break it down to the simplest um, notions is they cause you to lose your appetite. So 
you don't feel like you're starving. You feel just totally satiated or sated, all mean the same thing. You feel satisfied and you don't feel the urge to eat and eat and eat and eat. And, eat. and for, for these people, they lose a lot of weight and they sometimes use it very, lose it very quickly. And it leads to these couple of phenomena. One phenomena. One is called ozempic face and the other is called ozempic butt or ozempic body. So what we're talking about is people that lost a lot of weight in a very short period of time. And so that's where we're having one of our biggest um, requests. It's really a boom is uh, where a lot of people uh, that are suddenly lost a lot of weight and they want to keep it off. They want to, uh, to be able to uh, not have the excess skin. So that's where we're doing our torso tucks. Now, a torso tuck is a little bit different because guys, where women really need to lift everything up, a lot of times guys will have a nice butt and they'll have great legs uh, and it doesn't, and it breaks at the waist. So where, where, where women have maze just continue to slide all the way down the body, the guys have that belt line where a lot of it muffin tops over. And for, there's some people that would, they need to lift up the buttocks and uh, get that into place. But for a lot of people, and particularly people that are, have lost mid ranges, maybe with the Zempic, you might lose 30, 40, 70 pounds, sort of mid range. to need to have a torso tuck. And what we need to do, as we say, in our office is tuck the shirt into the pants. And if we can do Yeah, sorry, everybody. There's a storm on the East Coast um, that could possibly interfere with his feed. Um, so, Doc, I'm not sure if you can hear me. I'm going to remove you from the room, and then I'm going to have you add you back. Um, and unfortunately, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Um, I'm going to just shoot, look at the questions while we're waiting. That's what happens when you do a live show. Anything can happen. Um, I have skinny calves, uh, legs, especially my calves. Is there something you can do to augment it? Um, yes, go to maleplasticsurgery.com. Um, I'll put a link in the bio. I actually have the calf gallery here um, for you to check out. Not giving you medical advice. I'm not the doctor. I'm just pointing you towards the web resource, uh, Johnny. So, um, and if Doc comes back on, Hey, Doc, can you hear us? Okay. Uh, why would someone like Mickey Rourke, who lives in a capital plastic surgery, have bad plastic surgery? Well, one of the things he's got to worry about with plastic surgeons is ethics. Um, and, you know, you need a surgeon. I, I've seen Dr. Steinbrecht say no uh, to people. Um, and, uh, and, uh, there you are, Doc. Can you hear us okay? Yeah. Just had a quick tech technical. Well, there's problem. a there's a storm on the East Coast. So uh, uh I got a pretty bad storm here, so maybe that might be it. Let's yeah, go through the questions really quick from the viewers uh, before yep. we go back. Okay, I have skinny legs, especially my calves. Is there something you can do do to augment it? Absolutely. So the best thing you can do two things. You have a couple different uh options. So we're talking calf augmentation. One of the ways is to do it with body banking is use liposome transfer into the medial gastroc and the lateral gastroc. So the gastric nemus muscles are those two paired ones that pop on the left, on the right. What you don't want to do, and this is one of the big mistakes, is you'll go to some doctors, some plastic surgeons, they'll make one incision and they'll just shove one big fat implant with no definition. It looks very unnatural. And what you really want to do is what I do we like to use our alpha implants is use independent two paired muscles, just like I do for the biceps, biceps and triceps, two different muscle groups. I do the same for the calves. We put in the medial bump. That's what everybody wants. Put in a nice, good size one and we can do a lateral one. So when you have two separate ones, you get that definition for the calf. It looks natural. It doesn't look like just a big blob on the back of your leg. 
N, it's key, it's critical that you put on the three quarter position. What does that mean? That means when you're looking at it from the front, you can see the calf from the back peaking on the inside and having that beautiful contour that you can see from the front. Um, and that's, that's critical. So those are alpha static implants um, that are semi silicone. So they're sort of like gummy bear candies. I can yeah. custom carve them so they're unique for your own particular anatomy. Patients love them. And uh, I'm, I'm shocked that more, um, uh, more patients uh, don't get them. And I'm frankly shocked that more surgeons don't do it. It's, it's, yeah. When I do the case, it's such a beautiful case. I really enjoy doing it. Patients love the results so much. I can even do it under local. There's not a lot of pain. Patient could be asleep or can be just injected like they're going to the dentist. Make one small incision behind the um, behind uh, the knee, and really to to put the implant in uh, takes about five or ten minutes, and then to sew it up, just to sew up the skin incision, is uh, takes another five minutes. So it's it's not a big heavy. Uh, surgery and the patients walk right out and there's no cane, there's no walker, there's no stretcher. They get right up from the table because we put it on top of the muscle underneath the fascia. Yeah. And so it doesn't inhibit with their strength or ability to work out. In fact, they can go back and just work out the muscle more and it'll just push the implant uh, to be better and better and, and bigger and bigger. So Calf augmentation is a huge deal. And I, my, we have a ton of videos and a ton of pictures on my Instagram or the YouTube uh, uh, website, uh, which is Male Plastic Surgery. To of course, find the out Male Plastic Surgery that. .com, right? That's uh, streaming along. Yeah. It's, um, so we got, we got, a, we got a, a textbook about it. We got a fun question. Why would someone like Mickey Rourke, who lives in the capital of plastic surgery, have bad have such bad plastic surgery. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say anyone in particular, I don't want to mention Migarette in particular, which if you haven't seen nine and a half weeks, that is that is that is an incredible movie that he was in when he, you know, he's younger, super handsome, super sexy dude. Uh, but uh, women, men, whoever, watch that movie because uh, he was just fa fantastic in that. So what happens is a, a lot of times movie stars um, sort of panic and, you know, maybe they haven't had a lot of movie offerings and they immediately think it's because they're too old looking. So they panic and they go uh, to have to a plastic surgeon. And one of the problems is, is there are two things that happen. Either they kind of ran out of dough and none, none of these are specifically about Mickey Rourke, yeah. but the, the, there's a, a star that maybe ran out, ran out of dough and there there's a young plastic surgeon that says that they'll do it. That young plastic surgeon's trying to make his mark. Maybe he doesn't have a lot of experience and particularly not with men. And so they overdo things, they overreach or they don't have the right techniques and there's a complication. So that, can be a problem. And then what ends up happening is they need to fix it. And that a lot of the guys that people think they had really bad eye jobs, it's because they went to a surgeon and didn't, who didn't have a lot of experience and then fix it. They had to have several other procedures. So it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. So the other reason is, is some of these, some of these movie stars will have all the money in the world, right? But there's a sense of entitlement, and this is really interesting and really scary. There's a sense of entitlement, so they want to have it free because they feel like um, if they don't get things for free, then they don't have value. They feel like everyone should, you know, products, services, dinners. They feel it's insulting if they should have to pay because that is a comment on their star power, and it gets into their ego. And even though they have all the money in the world, they won't go to someone and the best plastic surgeons in Beverly Hills won't do free surgery because they feel, and this is a little insider story, they feel like they won't be respected 
or they feel like then the movie star owes them something, right? And also they feel that the movie star won't appreciate the value of what they've done. So the smartest and the most successful plastic surgeons for movie stars won't do anything free for them because then they lose their position of authority to be able to help them and their position of respect. They just become a doorknob. So the, 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 the star, even though they have tons of money, uh, walks right out of it because they're insulted because it won't be done for free. And they go to someone, they find someone who will do it for free with less experience, which can you imagine that? The smart movie stars, they have the money. They don't care. They pay top dollar because they want the very best surgery done and they understand the dynamics. Those are the smart movie stars that have that have enough money to do it and they get the best work and they get the most reliable work because they're they're going and they're paying top dollar for for the right surgeon. And again, it's not that that surgeon is greedy. It's just that that surgeon doesn't want to be walked all over because they feel like they the that the movie star needs them or the that they need the movie star more than the movie star needs them you get the you get the dynamics of that it's very interesting so um fat transfer to penis for can you use it for both size and girth yes so we're talking about gains and radius through hyaluronics all right what is that G-I-R-T-H. I'm going to say it again. Gains in radius through hyaluronics. That's a girth procedure. So what that allows is hyaluronic acids are things more plainly known as fillers. And so what we can do is we can go ahead and add, uh, add some gains in your girth or your radius by injections. Injections are done into the penis underneath uh, the skin. And what I did, I did it today. I did it a couple of times today. So oh, wow. we put in anywhere from uh, four to usually six to 16 syringes. Damn. And it, and I always dilute it down. And what that does is that allows it to go in smoother, yeah. more creamy, more dilute less of a chance of having lumps and bumps that sometimes you see in some of these injections where it just doesn't look good because it's not as, it's not as dilute. The reason what I like to do is when I dilute it out, you get three times as much volume so you can see what direction you're going into. Now, two thirds of the volume dissipates in a nice natural way over the first 48 hours. Um, but it gives you like, it gives you an idea of, what kind of improvement you can get with more product in the end. So uh, patients love it. It's the fastest growing, no pun, uh, part of my uh, practice. And now you can be a shower instead of just grower. Nice. Matthew, three months out from calf implants with Doc. Enough. Can't say enough good things about him and his team. Hey, thanks, Matthew. That's super. Hey, thanks, buddy. Yeah. Super, and then super that's happy. super nice you say it. How things down south. Good. And uh, he's super happy with the results. That's pretty cool to have a patient so already kind of underwent uh, the surgery um, with Doc. So that's pretty cool. It's uh, Johnny, if you want to book a consultation, just go below, mailplatsurgery.com. Um, three centers to choose from. He also offers virtual conversations, if, uh, consultations if some reason you're a little far. Um, we're not going to talk too much about price and procedures. Um, they're on the website. We give ranges. And you can also talk to uh, – Joe, the great patient advisor, again, male plastic surgery. Joe's amazing. And I, I understand money's uh, super important, but yeah. I just don't talk about it because I want people to know that we focus on results, but we can answer all those questions over the phone. Nice. I like that. Uh, I really like, Doc, that um, we had like kind of questions for people that like kind of wrote in and stuff. Yeah. Like, we're getting some live questions too. So for whatever reason... We'll do the live questions first, and if you back up too much with time, absolutely, you can always do another one. For the and you know what? I right just now. want to say one quick thing. Yeah. I'm so happy when my patients um, uh, call in because I love my patients. They're yeah. the greatest. They're amazing, and 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 I love that they're so happy with the results that they that they come on and say that. Thanks so much, man. That's I like great. this question slash comment. I like it a lot. Um, I'm working. I'm 25. Well, I wish I was 25, but this hard. You look 25, Tom. Yeah, exactly. Harsh is 25 years old. He's in a high-stress job. 
He knows he's going to do his 20-year stretch. He's wondering, is there a way to slow down the age look on his face? He's already got forehead wrinkles. So what's your what's your advice to Harsh? Okay. High stress is going to give you the wrinkles. And a lot of us, we like the wrinkles when we're animating. That's great. But we don't like them to be no, permanent. We're still, correct. We don't like permanent creases and lines. And I say it 10 times a day. The fine lines of today are the deep creases of tomorrow. So what you need to do is preventative medicine. That means you're going with Botox. We have yeah. actor's Botox that we just hit centrally or more broadly to cover the high forehead. Because guys do look great when you see a little motion there. We like it. We like to see a little bit. We don't want to be frozen. No offense. Nicole Kidman is a wonderful, beautiful woman. But we don't want to be have a little bit too much. She's amazing. She's wonderful. She's beautiful. But we just want to keep things a little bit lighter than sometimes people do. So for the, for the dudes, they want to be able to animate. So we do a men's version of it, not completely frozen. Some guys want to be a little bit want to have a little bit more. I can do that. But normally people want to have a little bit of motion. The other thing that we have is Daxify. Daxify is another, it's a new neurotoxin, a new Botox-like molecule that can last longer. They say six months. We don't guarantee it. But some guys are seeing a, a seeing longer life with, uh, with Daxify. Love it. Um, it's cool that you're on the cutting edge and you know what's kind of going on. Yeah, we got to talk about it. Uh, on Fox Television, which uh, Fox News, when it first came out, which was really, really cool to be able to be one of the first people to talk about it. Absolutely. Proud of. And uh, one, of, one of the kind of misconceptions is all the heavier guys come in or the guys that um, that lost weight. But yeah. you, you, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to answer for you, but I'd like for you to elaborate. You see a lot of athletes. So give Absolutely. Us kind of, yeah, give us kind of. Background. I'll tell you why we see athletes, because a lot of times athletes have injuries, bodybuilders or, or even um, just uh, uh, weight trainers will have a muscle tear. And so their 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 muscle is completely dis, uh, disattached um, and uh, orthopedics can't fix the belly because there's no strength to it. You can't put a mite tech screw in that. So just to get balance and. And I've had a lot of uh, bodybuilders and weight trainers just to have some balance aesthetically where we slipped on an implant just on one side. Uh, next week, I'm doing another one uh, for a calf implant for and it's only unilateral. So we have a lot of athletes or athletes that have fallen and had a nerve injury and they have a beautiful, sculpted, amazing bicep, tricep on one side. And then on the other side, they might, may have an arm this had atrophy down to like a 12 year old boy. And so we build it up one, we do first, we put a bicep implant, forearm implant, come back to the other head of the other forearm, the tricep, and then we body bank all around it to get them back where they were before they had their motorcycle accident, before they fell out of the tree, before they had the, the tear. So we see a lot of athletes, but just purely aesthetically, even without any injuries or accidents, we have guys from the gym that want, look, want to look really balanced and want to have, uh, say they have great biceps. A lot of times a mesomorph, which is standard muscle kind of bound guy, they have amazing delts, amazing biceps, but they can't grow a chest, surprisingly. Surprisingly, it's the other way around. The ectomorphs, the tall, skinny guys, they can develop a good chest, but have bony little uh, shoulders and bony little arms. So we can balance people out with that. Or there are a lot of amazing guys that have a beautiful upper body, and they just, Mother Nature screwed them over in the calf department. So they need calf augmentation just so that people, and they never skipped leg day. You know, that's what people always think. They never skipped leg day. But I even see a guys in the gym and they have this incredible upper body and even great quads, which shows you they didn't skip leg, but a great butt, great quads, but their calves are deficient. So absolutely. All right. We'll take a few more questions before we wrap up. Yep. Uh, we did. It. We're gonna to have to do another one next. Well, we're gonna plan on doing this on a weekly basis. Absolutely, so it's pretty cool. So stay tuned. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like, share with a friend. Uh, what do you think of bone stretching? To add a few inches to your height seems very popular in uh, China. You know, it's funny because uh, we we saw a lot of this. I first saw there was a guy, a Russian guy named Elizarov that was doing this, and so we first saw it at NYU when I was in my training. And uh, we were doing rounds in the orthopedic uh, uh, off uh, orthopedic surgery, and they were doing it for limb length discrepancies. But now we're just doing it just to increase height. I think it's a great, I, you know, it is a, it's a very good 
uh, surgery to do. It's very, it's, it's quite expensive. Uh, insurance will cover for limb length discrepancy, but if you're doing it for aesthetic purposes, uh, it is good at surgery. It does have, you give us a, give our office a call and I can give you some names of some good people, but, um, it's going to become increasingly popular. And what you're going to find is as it does increase in popularity, it's going to bring the price down. One of the things I was going to say when I was at NYU, we brought around R at, at, at Bellevue. They weren't even doing it at the university yet. They were doing it at Bellevue Hospital. And we took over our, our chairman of our department. And they said that we're working on the wrong bone. And he meant that we need to stretch out the mandible. So we started putting the devices. And we started in the lab. I was doing research. We started doing it in dogs. And then we did it for people. And we actually helped a lot of kids that had a recessed jawline and had to have a trachea. So Dr. McCarthy uh, was a legend with this and several others to bring it forward. We could take out the trach in these poor kids and then let them have their airway and also make them look nice and normal again. So it was really, really great for, for kids, but it, but it's also great for height. Nice. We'll make this the last question before we wrap yep. up. Like I said, we're going to do this on a regular basis. Absolutely. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Uh, do you treat uh, skin rejuvenation? I've been thinking of improving my skin quality. I heard of Sculptra, PRF, and exo Exosome. Want to hear Doc's thoughts on what works best for a 40-year-old assuming male? Yeah, exosomes are like a new, uh, crazy new trend. The other things that are really important is, number one, a very sensible uh, regimen. I have a hyaluronic-based um, uh, regimen that I like to use along with uh, a cleanser, we have a moisturizer, then at the very end, a hyaluronic based product that really just almost, uh, it just, uh, it brightens up my skin so much and it tightens up and it keeps it sort of almost in a mask all day long, but it's a mask that does two things. It puts you in a better position so your face looks higher and tighter, but also by your face helping to defy gravity if you do this every day, it really keeps your face in position so the weight of gravity isn't just constantly um, uh, weighting your, your face down and your facial structures. And also it protects you from the elements when you're outside uh, from the, the, it's the smoke and the smog that we had here uh, two weeks ago in New York from the forest fires in Canada. So it, it also protects you. So I think that's important. We have lasers, RF, CO2, that are very important and RF is, uh, is colorblind. So no matter what color your skin is, radio yeah. frequency uh, it, it is uh, agnostic and it can, uh, it can work on any color types without causing scarring or problems. Nice. All right, guys, so just really quick, I'm gonna give a Thanks, little uh, teaser for next week. Next week Thanks. we're discussing Thanks, Frankie. body banking and uh, male model makeover. So doc, thanks so much for your time. Um, you can find Doc at, at Male Plastic Surgery on Instagram and the website. The main national one is maleplasticsurgery.com. And uh, Doc, I really appreciate your time. And, uh, thanks, man. And, uh, yeah, and thanks. I just want to say, guys, DM us yeah. at maleplasticsurgery.com. We're always there. We're ready for you. And uh, we'll get back to you as quickly as possible, if not immediately. We've had so many great exchanges. For people that just have quick questions and want an answer, you know, you don't have to come in and make a consult. You can just ask us a quick question. We really like the engagement and we re really like to uh, have people out there uh, following us and seeing all the good, great stuff that our office is doing. Tom, thanks so much for tonight. Thanks, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao.